Thank you for joining me guys. Now I'm going to be talking about some of the benefits of this popular wall hung toilet. We have solid steel work, we've got a load on this wall hung toilet which has been tested up to 400 kg, we've got seamless one piece system which is made of durable polyethylene, it's tested for 100% tightness, it's triple welded flush bends and all the parts are easily accessible and you've also got a guarantee on these parts because they're going to be available for 25 years the installation guys is relatively easy you can do this watch this video step by step try not to miss it out and get comfortable let's get to it I uh, just want to go through what model this is, this is a UP320 it's a 1.12 frame this is a lot taller than the 0.8 frame and why would you buy a 0.8 frame you'd buy that if there was potentially a window there just be careful before you purchase this with this particular frame with the 1.12 one of the benefits is as opposed to the 0.8 is when you open the lid it doesn't cover the flush button and some customers have an issue with that so that's the tileable template guide for the flush button so that you don't have a big gap at the end you've got the threaded rods which take the pack weight of the pan and then they come with these covers that you slide over that just stops the tile adhesive going all into the uh, the threads we've got the pan connector which goes on at the end of the job which is like a 90 mil pan connector we've got a 90 mil bend with these ridges in here and this clamp goes into one of those ridges on the frame that's a converter from 110 mil to 90 mil so this should be putting in your soil pipe that's the grommet for the flush pipe i haven't got the flush pipe here it's gone walkie so <laughs> i'll have to uh i'll include that in the video somewhere these are the blanks guys so that blanks the four in there that just stops the smells coming through. And that blanks the flush pipe. Right, this, you may find these in the box. This is like a special fast fix clamping system, like in a C stud, like a C stud application for a commercial project, if you've got like loads in a line. But you don't need these because we're, working on a domestic 1900s house so we'll be simply screwing this into a piece of wood so here that's the water inlet valve it's an isolator and that just clamps it to the back of the tank these basically connect onto these threads here guys and the, this thread system here these are the actual rods that hold this firmly back to the wall and then these these actually click onto this and it just stops any shudder or any movement You've got a series of coach bolts and raw plugs if you're going into any masonry uh, you'll need the plugs but for wood we're just going to go straight in these are exposed pan fixings depends on the pan you buy guys you may not need these because sometimes the pans nowadays they've got concealed fixings i'm not sure why gebrit keeps supplying these but we just keep these these come in handy for even basins okay before we get stuck into the practical i need you to understand what you are fitting and there's a lot of demonstrations out there which go straight to the fitting and i know that's the exciting part but you need to understand and have knowledge about what is this thing what is this thing that you just unpacked and you're now about to install this in the customer's home or your home and it's got to stand the test of time. Ultimately, you've got to remember there's a big, heavy piece of pottery which is clamped onto it, and you are going to be sitting on that. And this needs to stand up to that weight. That's the diagram you want to focus on, which is the side profile. When you do clamp the pan on at the end of the project, when you sit down, two things are happening. There's a downwards force which is driving into the steel frame, and that is driving into the floor and if it's a plywood or a joist situation you're gonna have some flex and the other action that's happening is as you sit on the toilet it wants to pull the frame forward so it's almost like a cantilever action and you've got to ensure that these bolts 
are solidly fixed. There's a good fixing in the surface. So this is an understanding of the driving forces of this frame. Right guys, so these are uh, two quick sketches I've just done now. Option one is where you build a whole wall out if you have space in your bathroom. Sometimes a client will actually be willing to sacrifice that space to have something like that. And that's the most aesthetically pleasing option because it actually looks like a wall hung toilet frame. Um, your second option is not so pleasing, is to alter box and build forward. And you can create this framework in all sorts of configurations. This box can be going higher up to the ceiling. It can be a ledge going all the way across for you to put your bits and pieces on. You could have a granite shelf on there and you know, so on and so forth. You get the idea. So those are the two options that you have when you are fitting wall hung frames. Something which is super important for you to determine like the look of that wall hung frame, which is what I just discussed previously, whether you bring it forward as a box or whether you have it perfectly flush with the wall is, is basically governed by your drainage. Because ultimately when you look at this as a bird's eye view, there has to be a soil pipe which comes from the rear. It could come from the rear and I'll draw the pipe here. If it is coming from the rear guys, and it allows you to push the frame back all the way back, really tight to the wall. That is the best, probably the best scenario for this type of installation. That's option one. That's what's gonna govern. Option two, your soil pipe now is entering through the side. Now we can't push the frame back as far as possible because now we have this uh, pipe in the way. But that's one of the negatives of a side entry soil pipe situation when you're fitting a wall hung toilet. So that's option two. So option three now guys is gonna be the pipe the four inch pipe is coming out of the floor. That can sometimes be a pain as well, guys. You put the elbow on, it means that you have to bring the frame more forward into the room. So I'll just demonstrate here. So I'll draw it here. So that's the wall, that's the floor. And imagine when You've got the hole in the floor there, and as soon as you put the elbow on, it brings it forward, and then that means the frame has to sit forward. Do you understand? So I hope that makes sense, guys. Um, but these are the things that you need to think about. So now, let's get to it. So the first step is looking at where the soil pipe is. In this particular scenario or situation, my soil pipe is behind this wall, that's the way I've simulated it. So we've actually built the wall forward. We're not gonna be building the box. This is actually gonna be going into the wall. And like I said before, because it's a side entry situation, it's the least favored option. But if you've got a huge room, you can actually build a whole wall forward and make it look like proper wall hung system. So now, if you've got joists, there's gonna be some flex in the floor. And what Geberit supply is some coach bolts that drive deep into these sections. What I like to do, and I think it's beneficial, is to always build a picture frame first and rest it on the picture frame. Why do we do that? Ensure that you've got a decent fixing at the bottom, guys. And I always like to put a piece of wood or picture frame it first with some stud work so that these coach bolts have some material, substantial material to grip to. When you try and screw this, let's say, through, a, let's say if this was sitting on a floorboard, these begin to spin. Because uh, 18mm, in my opinion, it's just not substantial enough. 
Okay, so what's going through my mind here if I'm on site now and I'm thinking, right, how do I begin this? So, the first thing I want to establish is this. If you are replacing a normal toilet, let's say like a standard toilet, which is floor mounted, this is going to be lower than this. And with these legs, guys, they're adjustable. So the first thing you need to determine is what's the outcome of this? What height should this be? Well, the first thing that you need to do is, and this is something that's super important, is you need to see where the pan finishes. And I've drawn like a little mark here, pan height. And how did I find that pan height? Here's my, right, here's my pan. And what I've done, see that? That's the flush, that's the flush pipe hole. And from the top to the center of the flush pipe, I've just transferred there. So from the center to the top of the pan, just to clarify. And that gives me an understanding of how high, not how high, where, where the pan sits here. So remember, we're not interested in that area at the moment. We're just focused on our end goal first. So now we've determined where our pan sits. What we're gonna now do is we're gonna have a little look at the floor area. And whatever you've got on this floor, guys, you have to work out the layers that are being built up on this floor. Right, so what I've done here is I've got the tile and we are gonna simulate what it would be like if I put all my layers down. So I'm gonna put some anti-fracture decoupling mat down and that's probably gonna have like a mil or two of adhesive underneath that. And then on top of that, there's gonna be tile adhesive. So we'll say nine mil pushing down to four mil, five mil, and then the tile goes on there. And that you can see the build up underneath. That will be different from job to job, guys, but you have to try and guesstimate your floor build up. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna measure from that finished floor height to that mark there, which is the pan height. And what am I getting here? I'm getting 19 inches. And then what you need to do is, dependent on what the customer wants, and I always go by the customer, and I tell them that standard height is 16 inches approximately. With a wall hung toilet, you can have up to 17, even 17 and a half. But I also like to add on the toilet seat onto that, which is probably about another centimeter on there. So if you're aiming for 17 guys, um, you know how to do it now, because I've just explained the floor build up. Okay, right, so what we've done is we've worked out our build up on our floor. And let's say for instance, uh, the, class, the, the client wants the toilet at 17 inches from finish floor level. So what we're gonna do is we know where the pan's gonna land and we know what our floor height's gonna be. We need to make a mark on the wall at 17 inches from finished floor level. So we're gonna put a mark, if you can see that. That's the finished outcome. What we're gonna do is, if you've got one of these, you can hang this, screw it to the door frame or something, and we're gonna run the laser, and this is what makes it easy with the laser, guys, and I'll just position that in now somewhere. See, now, using the laser, it allows the laser line, obviously, just permanently stay there, and that's at 17 inches to my finished tile. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop this frame down to that laser line. You wanna get yourself one of these guys, a ratchet set uh, with a socket. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna loosen up these. Just going 
gonna give it a little tap. And we want the laser line now to line up with pan height, which is 17 inches. Right. Right, and the other thing is, guys, you want to be checking is that level. Because remember, there's two legs, there's two adjustments. Now, look, it's out of level now. So it's showing that. This side, I need to just notch that, drop that down a touch. Right, that's level. And the legs are tight, and my line is landing now at 17 inches from that tile. So remember guys, there is no set height on this toilet. It's up to you how high you want it. I always say that and I always ask customers. So just remember that you're free to choose what height you want your toilet. It's your toilet after all. So now I'm happy with the top that I've got a solid fixing to go into. I know there's a solid fixing here to go into. I've set the height of the frame. Right, if you look at these guys, um, they've just got some non-return catches on there, so I'm gonna push them through the holes. These are actually the rods that go into the top of the frame. So I'm gonna put them in, and they're gonna snap in. So I'm just gonna push those in. Right, that's snapped in. And if you look at the back, it just shows you clearly the rod sticking out. Okay, so guys, I thought I'd zoom in here and I'd just show you the rods that attach to the back of the wall. Now, you've got this plastic little lug that basically what that does is it stops any sort of micro movement back and forward. Um, and basically, do you see the way I'm going back and forward? There is a little area there that once I'm happy that I am flush with the timbers on the wall what we do is we just push in that circlip right there and then we can push on these plastic little lugs right guys so what i'm doing here is now i'm driving in the bolts uh deep into the back of the wood Now, on the other end, basically what happened here was there was a really loose area in the brick. So what I used was a little bit of chem fix, like a liquid resin fixing. You may notice, guys, if the wall surface at the back is a little bit in and out, it, it makes the rod sort of point upwards and it can actually knock this slightly out of level. Um, it's all right now, but it, it does happen sometimes. So just bear that in mind. Right, so what we're gonna do guys, we haven't got a lot of space here to put the drill driver in. We're gonna use that, which is an angle bit holder and it's impact certified. So it's great, great bit of kit that is. This really comes in handy guys. So we'll do it manually for now. Oh, I forgot to tell you in the video here, I also pilot drilled the wood. Very, very important, guys. I missed that bit out, so make sure you do that. Some people, they drive this in at an angle with the driver, and you're not really clamping the legs down. So just bear that in mind. Um, just It's just a little bit more work, takes a little bit more time, but do it properly, do it once, do it right. Okay, so guys... Here, this is the final stages of actually bolting it in. We do not worry, need to worry about the height now because that's determined. We're just getting a solid fixing. Right, so if we look at this elbow, there's two ridges on here. The only negative I would just start by saying is with Gebrit, they don't supply a straight connector with this and some other brands do. That's the only negative. Now, what we have to do is, you see these ridges? These ridges will sit inside this collar. Now this collar can actually sit forward as well. And you can position the collar front and back. 
So you've got that play because the drainage might be sitting slightly tighter to the frame or it might be further away. So you've got that little bit of tolerance. So what we do is we position this to where we think we can get all the parts in by setting, I've set it a little bit back actually in the ridges and that allows me a little bit of space to put this reducer. And this is a 110 mil to 90 mil reducer. Right, so we've got some silicone lubricant here, guys. So what we're gonna do is, well, that's better. Right, and now we're gonna position it here. This is going to snap it shut now, guys. And clamp down on the connector. And you just, you just want to hear a click, guys. That's it. Awesome. Right, so now if we look at the pipe guys here, the four inch, we're looking to see, is there a micro fall on there? A very, very micro fall, a fall or a pitch or a gradient on there. So that's what you've got to check for. Very, very micro, doesn't need to be drastic over that short span. Right, so, what we're looking at here is, is, is it lining up to there? And we're going to measure from this point to this point here and cut a piece of four inch and glue it in between the two. And I measured 350. I'm not going to glue these in, by the way, guys, because we're going to be using these for a demo. Um, but we'll be covering that later on in the uh, in the course. But because we've got a fixed point situation, how do I get the pipe? And this is a common problem in plumbing. How do you get the pipe in between these two fittings? Here, it's actually not too difficult because all we can do is simply detach the elbow, remove, pass that through, push that in there, like so, and then push that on, yeah, if I can get that on, and bring it forward, like that, and then we just snap this, like so. And what you want to do now is, is you want to see, are we on a decent slope? And that's what we're after, guys. Right, so, so what you're gonna do now is, guys, you're gonna put these rods in. These are the supporting rods. These are what actually take the full load of the pan. The pan actually rests on these. And you've got a number of options here. And what you have to do is, you go and have a look at the pan and you measure the center points of the two holes at the back. In most cases, it's always the two closer ones on the center here, on the inside. So what we simply do is a fast way, rather than using a flat head, what we'd like to do is put that in a drill, tighten that up, and then we just thread that in. That's just a little quick hack. Something that we've picked up over the years. The key thing is, guys, also is to put these on. They actually stop the tile adhesive dropping onto the threads and then restricting 
the nut from going on. Right guys, so now we're gonna be putting the inlet valve in. You can sometimes put this in before you install the frame to make it a little bit more easier for yourself. But if you've got the space, you can put it in and after. Now what we're gonna be doing is putting on this half inch thread, we're gonna be putting a female iron to copper. And in this application, we're gonna be using PTFE. You can use Loctite on that. Uh, I think it's 577, yet, yeah, which is the liquid plastic and that re reacts with two metal surfaces. But for this demonstration, we're gonna use PTFE. Okay, so now let's look at the inlet valve. Right, see the way you've got these little markings here? That just helps grip the PTFE tape if you are going to be using PTFE tape. Right, so what we're going to do is I like to do 15 to 20 wraps in general. So let's put some PTFE on here. Right. Right. I, mean, I will be doing another video, guys, on general plumbing jointing techniques as well, shorter videos, and you will have the knowledge to apply PTFE. I don't know how many reps that was now. I think that's what? That's probably six. That's seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay. Right, so now just hand tighten catch the thread right, that's great what we're gonna do is get a nice firm grip on there we're gonna turn apply ourselves just short turns, not putting too much brute force into this. And you can buy longer ones than these guys. You could actually buy ones with long legs and they're perfect to push all the way in because then you can be sure that the fitting has gone all the way to its depth stop. So if we want to tighten that, we'd really want to be putting some paste on there. And this applies to you know every compression joint Right, so here's the jointing compound. So what we're gonna do is, we're just gonna smother a little bit of jointing compound over the olive, just to avoid any weeps coming through. Like I said, you can get longer ones of these guys, you know, and it does actually make quite a big difference if you are gonna use a street elbow. I mean, this is all I've got in my plumbing box at the moment. Um, right, so now, just make sure that's pushed in nicely and it's you know there's a sufficient amount of pipe running past the olive and then all we need to do right there make sure that this face is the correct way guys so that when you insert this into the tank that you know it's going in the direction that you want it to go so the pipe could be coming from the left right top bottom wherever Right guys, so I'm gonna be putting this in and you've got, sometimes on these frames, you've got a side entry. You see here, you've got a back entry here and you've also got one through here. So what I've done is I've pulled the cap off and I'm just gonna slide this in. Um, you know, it could have been put in earlier to be totally honest, hang on. Right, let's put that in, could have been put in earlier. It would have made a life a little bit easier, but hey ho, right. Um, okay, so that's in and that fits in there like that. And then now what we do, this little clamping ring, and we put that on. Just gonna thread that on. That's nice and firm, that's hand tightened. And the isolation valve, what we do is, we turn that off guys. And look, you see the elbow here? You can actually just put a pipe in there to begin with. It depends on how you want to do it. Whether you want to use plastic pipe, guys, it's entirely up to you. 
Okay guys, so I'm doing a little bit of soldering here. Now it's entirely up to you how about how you go about doing this. You can use plastic, there's nothing wrong with that, so please don't feel as though you have to use copper. we have to do now is before we turn the water on we actually have to bring the water through here through the flexi hose and into a bucket because we don't once we connect it up here and we turn the water on all that flux um, and all that residue is going to end up coming through here and blocking the, uh, the fill valve here which is what we don't want because it's actually a, like a very very small micro ball hole in here that allows the water to come through and that gets blocked up very very quickly so what we have to do is we've got to take this off and now we're going to take this off and we're going to point this into a bucket but first actually let's kind of clean this up Make sure that o-ring's nicely firmly pushed in yeah, but remember keep this off now we're going to take this off we don't want all the rubbish going into this right, so let's that out everything's very very easily detachable guys so please do not you know Get worried that you know you're not going to be able to fit this all back in everything's pretty easy to sort of demount but you can see this now guys so we're going to just project that into a bucket you may want to put a clip on that just to avoid any rattling when the water fills up and then shuts off okay so now guys i've turned the water on um, it's shut off here, so I'm just going to basically purge it through. Get all the water out, get all the dirty flux out. And you can just smell all that flux coming through. You can actually just see a lot of that in the bucket. In there. Right. Right, so now we know we have water, and I'm still not going to fill up the tank, because I want to put all the parts back in. And you've got to remember, these two prongs, guys, that's what actually lifts up the drop valve. So they've got to actually slide in in between these two little areas here. I'm just going to guide that in. You've got to make sure that those prongs when they go in they don't lift up the drop valve because what happens is when that's up and you turn the water on the water actually starts to come flooding through here so that's just something that you've got to be aware of let's put the stopper in and we're ready to fill up the system Right, now once the system is filled up, guys, it will actually stop because it's factory fitted to stop at the six litre mark. You shouldn't have technically any issues with that. Right, so as you can see, guys, everything's connected here now. The water feeds on, we've purged the water through, drainage has been connected, and now we're ready to board. Okay, so you see this cover, guys? This gives you information, if I can get that the right way. Um, it gives you information on how to service the inlet valve. 
and just some of the parts here, how to control the levels of water that you might want flushing through the toilet. Okay guys, so this is a cover that comes in handy. It's not something that you wanna chuck away. So many guys chuck them away. But what's the, what this actually does is that prevents dust from going into the system through the flush button. If I can get that on. Right, great. Need to pop that out as well so we can get access to the service valve. And then lastly, lastly, you just wanna put the tileable template cover on over the flush button like so and then just push like that and it clicks into place beautifully guys so that that is in now I haven't stuck it uh, I'm gonna show you in a minute what to do when you stick this to the the framework but I want to talk about plasterboard we see so many people professionals who are using covering the wall hung frame with plywood or cement board because they do not trust plasterboard use green plasterboard its density and structure is far greater than standard plasterboard. And it will handle a little bit of moisture, but we're not too worried about moisture because this is not a wet zone, guys. So please remember that green plasterboard, moisture resistant MR plaster, it will handle the compression of that toilet when you're driving it into the wall. As long as you are covering this with full bed adhesive, you are not going to have a problem. What Gebrit supply and a number of wall hung frames, uh, brands that is, is these self tapping screws. And what they want you to do is, where you use drywall screws that go into the wood, they want you to drill into the steel using the self tapping screws so that all of this is secure. They used to tell you to put silicone on here or some sort of structural hybrid silicone like a polyurethane like a CT1 um, or equivalent all over this this uh, frame area um, and then that just compensates for any micro imperfection let's say there's like an air gap there or um, a little discrepancy between the the timber work from side to side so that when you clamp it on it's fused nice and tightly to this framework. So just make sure you do that. I'm not gonna do that now because I need this for demonstration purposes and it's gonna make a right mess of uh, the frame. But I will screw up the plasterboard for you um, and we'll talk about the wall hung toilet. Okay guys, so this is on now. And what you wanna just check for last minute is just to inspect in here, is there any gaps to the metal? Is this plasterboard touching this metal frame? And if there is a very micro gap, the sealant should have compensated for that. But the last thing you want is for this to be moving in and out. Because what's gonna happen is when you tile this and then you come back the next day to fit the toilet, when the toilet drives back tight, it's actually going to make the tiles buckle and cave in and crack. So just please, please, please make sure you do that. The other little tip I can provide for you guys is sometimes a lot of professional bathroom installers, what they do is they put an extra block of wood here because as the pan, when you sit on the pan and it drives into the wall, you know, that's just an extra bit of support there. So you can put a bit of wood there in between the legs just to strengthen it. And that will just mitigate the risk of any cracking or any movement. And this blue plasterboard, it represents the tile. Um, I didn't want to tile this because I've got to use this for other purposes. So, but you get the idea. I've added on now 12 mil thickness standard porcelain tile, let's say with some two mil adhesive. We're going to remove these. 
which should be covered with your tile adhesive and there's no tile adhesive now in the threads so that's a positive positive. and now what you're going to do is you're going to have a little look at the instructions and you're going to see at what depth you have to put these bullets on things so they've got to be facing outwards so that the grub screw lands on the outer part here and starts to slip when it ha hits this area and starts to draw the pan in so you've got to get it to land perfectly on this edge here not in the center because nothing will happen it will just the grub screw will find its way bang on in the center and that's pretty much useless if you are on your back um, on your own guys please watch your back it can get incredibly difficult this process you may want to get somebody with you guys sometimes the uh, the threaded rods on these are a little bit rounded and you they just don't catch you know the nuts don't go on or these bullets don't go on so just flip it around and you should be fine um, if you know if that fails you might want to just cut the thread down just a touch and expose the thread nicely but here I am just going off to get another one um, I do have plenty of these in stock and uh, that just did the trick you can see that it's nicely rounded right from the back of the pan what do we got here to that center line we've got 80 We want 80 on the pan just to land on the outside of that scoop, which is more towards you guys. Yeah, it's pretty similar. So we've got an equal measurement to the tip of the bullet. So we've got 100 and 100. So we'll turn that that way. Right. Is that correct? Is that all the same? Not too, too much, guys. Just enough for that to push on. I want to go overboard. Right, great. Now we have the flush pipe. We're gonna put some silicone lubricant in there. Not too much, guys. You don't wanna cake it in, it's just gotta glide in. Because if you put too much, it's gonna end up getting really slippery and sort of pop out. Right, that's it. Right, that's hit it, step, stop, that's hit it, step, stop. From the face of this, get something straight and you're gonna measure, that's, remember guys, that's the back of the toilet. You're gonna now measure inside and look at the depth stop, where the pipe will stop. And I'm getting a reading of 100. So what I'm gonna do, rather than being too accurate, I'm gonna go a little bit shorter. If you go too long on the pipe, guys, the pan will not go back. So let's go a little bit shorter let's go 96 so i'm gonna do 90 let's go 95 95 is the measurement from the back of the pan that i need to get 95 let's write that there and then we're gonna butt this up to represent the pan again we're gonna measure into the depth stop it's showing 48 but i'm gonna go 40 Five. Yeah, let's call this 45. Let's write 45 there. Let's double check. Have we got 45? Yes, we have. We've got 95 here. Yes, I'm happy with that. So that's 45. And now with a black, any sort of white markers or, you know, this is great. This pencil's great. It's a Pika pencil. I always have lots of different marking devices and it's brilliant for black. So what we'll do is we'll just see am I right there. I didn't pick up a wrong measurement. And remember the right side, the back of that 95, am I correct? Yes, fantastic. Right, this is great for this pipe, guys. It's a Nipex uh, pipe cutter. I'll just go in slowly. What I found with this, guys, is if you bite in too hard, it flares the pipe out so i'd like to just go in gradually don't put too much pressure on this oh. 
beautiful. It's on the market to chamfer. You could do it with an angle grinder, guys. So I'm going to do it the old fashioned way. Now, let's cut this. Probably going to have to cut this with my angle grinder, or I'm going to have to cut this with a hacksaw. Alright guys, I've just cut that with my saw, some rough plastic in there that you want to remove, definitely don't want any waste or any toilet paper to sort of cling to that, let's deburr that, okay, and that's pretty accurate, you know, all the way around, you know, it's important any third time you're cutting pipe, you know, so continuously mark so you've got that guide, you know, and that line to follow, um, right, okay, let's... What I want to say is that when you install this, you have to put these is where you install. So you just turn, just get a feel for it and push. Let's put some lubricant there, guys. Because guys, I've seen this done on YouTube and this is a key part in this process because it could be a super struggle. People, they, what I've seen them do is put this on the pan and you've got this heavy load in your arms and you know, you naturally sort of drop and it's a little bit, you know, cumbersome, it's a little bit awkward. And what happens is when this is connected onto the pan, these sort of start going up and down as you're trying to go in. So the only thing that you wanna be dealing with is the pan. The pan is your priority to line up with these, not having to lift the heavy weight and have these sticking out at the end and trying to guide them in. You want these already guided in. So we're just gonna adjust. Right, brilliant. Okay, fantastic. Right, that's correct, yeah, that is clipped in. Okay, right, brilliant, okay. Right, so now, Put a little bit of lubricant on here, and then we are good to go. Sure, before you put this on the wall, that's the correct one. You want to make sure that the grab screw isn't poking out, otherwise, it's gonna restrict the pan going back. Okay, and you just want it on the edges, ready to bite into the bullets. Is that one right? So, you just want to get the yeah, see, that one's that one's already poking into this area, so don't worry, don't want that, we want to bring it back. Right, great, that's ready. So it's just on the edge here, ready to sort of come in as I turn. Right, so at this stage, you, you, it's most likely that you're gonna have a tiled floor here, and you don't want to scratch the floor, you don't want to hit, you know, end up, you know, n knocking this and the pan breaks or you drop it, so, it's advisable to put a dust sheet down, carpet, anything soft, just to protect the floor area. Right, I'm happy with all that. I'm gonna push it on. I like to be on my knees, guys. Right. Right, so as you've got it on, you want to maybe get the knees underneath it, not put too much pressure on your back. Pick this up, and now fingers crossed. The dreaded moment. Find the Allen key area. Find the grub screw. Feel. There you go. I can see it being pulled, and it just takes one for it to catch, and it's already tightened. And that's perfect. You may be in a situation, guys, where you tighten, 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 and it just stops, and you're like, hang on, why hasn't it pulled? And then what you have to do is you have to retract the grub screw back 
but you have to retract it just enough. If you retract it too far back, you end up dropping the grub screw in the pottery and then it becomes a nightmare. So let's do this side. And you have got a little bit of adjustment, guys, to get this level. So you could put a level across here. Right, to some of you, righty tighty, lefty loosey. And just to give, give some extra support, we could just give, lift it up a tad. Can you hear that? Right. And we turn, and we turn. And remember guys, it will be a separate video, but if you've tiled correctly and you've got full bed coverage, you should have You should have no problems with this, you know, clamping very, very tightly up against the wall and, you know, no tile will crack. Ta -da. Right, and that's it. And then what you want to do is the moment of truth is you want to sit. Guys, thank you for sticking with me on this tutorial. I know it was a little bit long, but I hope you've gained some valuable information. And what I wanted to do in this video was to highlight some of the potential problems that you may encounter. Something that us professionals encounter on a daily basis and we've managed to suss everything out and find out all the little tips and tricks for you so that you can enjoy and go through this process super smooth so stay tuned and you know i hope you enjoy the next tutorial so 